Hello students, welcome to another Chem Complete lesson. And in today's lesson, what I would like to do is take a look at how resonance is going to affect acidity. And we'll run through a set of examples here in order to best understand that. So one of the conditions of going through this lecture and understanding it is that you already have a good grasp on what resonance is and you need to make sure that you're comfortable with that if you're not i'll leave a link to a resonance video that i've already done down in the description box and i would just encourage you to watch that before you start taking a look at this lecture here so that is all coming up right now Okay, so as usual, before we get started here, just a quick reminder, if you could hit the like button, which would really help out with the YouTube algorithm, and if you comment, I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. Head on over to chemcomplete.com, and you can check out all the wonderful guides we have available for sale there to help you with any of your lab or lecture needs. Now, let's go ahead and get started. So, resonance is a general concept that states when you have excess charge or electron property in a given molecule or compound, it will be delocalized over multiple atoms when available. So resonance is really the delocalization or the spreading out of a charge concentration over multiple atoms instead of localizing that charge to one individual atom. Now, one of the important parts of acidity is understanding what is going to cause a compound to be more acidic or less acidic. And there's a lot of different factors that can play into this. So it's not just resonance as the only factor, but resonance certainly does play a role in determining acidity. And we're going to take a look at two different example sets to understand that. So the first set is going to be taking a look at acetic acid relative to ethanol. So acetic acid is a carboxylic acid, a type of functional group, and it is acidic. You can even see in the name when it's called a carboxylic acid, that acid part is really referring to this proton right here. That's the acidic proton. Okay, and then we're going to compare that to kind of its alcohol counterpart that could easily be oxidized into a carboxylic acid, and that is ethanol. So these two compounds have some similarities in terms of carbon count, in terms of the fact that they have an oxygen that contains a hydrogen and could undergo hydrogen bonding. So somewhat similar in some of their properties, but they also have a big difference in their properties. And that is that when we're taking a look at the acidic protons, the acidity of the carboxylic acid is much greater than that of the ethanol. Now remember pKa like pH is an inverse scale so that means that the lower the pKa value the greater the acidity just like the lower a pH value is the more acidic the solution is and that's because this is a negative logarithmic transformation from the Ka equilibrium constant for an acid. So the relative difference here if we take a look for simple rounding sake, this is around 5, and this is 16. So we almost have a difference of 11 in pKa. Now, every single time that we take a jump in pKa by one pKa unit, it's by a factor of 10. So if there's something, for instance, that has a pKa of 5 and then a pKa of 7, the one that is 5 is 100 times more acidic than that of a pKa of 7. So if we were doing some quick math and rounding here and looking at 5 versus 16, the difference there being 11, well 10 to the 9th is going to be a billion. So 10 to the 10th would be 10 billion. So we're really looking at 100 billion times more acidic, okay? Slightly more than that because it's really not 5, it's 4.75. But roughly speaking, a carboxylic acid of similar size here is about a hundred billion times more acidic and the main reason for that is resonance so resonance plays a very large effect in the acidity of a potential compound now 
If we take a look, what do we mean when we're discussing resonance with acidity? Well, any time that an acidic proton is going to be given off, similar to a Bronsted-Lowry definition, the proton is released into solution and leaves behind a conjugate base. So in this case, the conjugate base will be left in the form of this oxygen that has an excess pair because it sent the H plus off into solution without any electrons. So the extra electrons come back and are sort of deposited onto that oxygen, right? So the same thing with the ethanol. The ethanol could potentially lose that proton and it would look somewhat similar in the fact that the oxygen would carry an extra pair and would have a negative charge associated with it. But now for the big difference. The difference here is that when the ethanol loses this hydrogen, the charge is localized to this oxygen. It does not have anywhere else to go. It must stay on that oxygen. Now it's good that the oxygen is electronegative. That will certainly help in terms of hosting the excess charge that's left behind. You want an electronegative element compared to an electropositive element. However, it is still burdensome to have it all localized in one area. It's much better to be able to spread out the excess electrons. And that's exactly what can happen through resonance here. This oxygen can deposit these to create a pi bond and open this up. Now keep in mind, if you did go through my resonance lecture or you have an understanding of resonance, you know that resonance is imaginary, meaning that the individual forms do not exist. It's really a blend between those forms. So when I say, oh, this is going to create a pi bond here and go to here, it's really spread out between these two forms. That's the reality of it, okay? But we're not here to talk about uh, all of the given features of resonance as much as just looking at how it plays into acidity. Okay, so what we have is this as an alternative form. So because the carboxylic acid has the ability to move the excess electrons back and forth between two oxygen atoms instead of one, this is going to become a more stable conjugate base. And if it's a more stable conjugate base, anything that is more stable is more likely to form, right? So if this is going to be a less stable form, then that means that it's not going to be as likely to give away that H plus and go into a rather unstable or less stable conjugate base form in comparison to the carboxylic acid, which will very readily give off its H plus because it's going to go into a stabilized form in return when it gets to the conjugate base. And that can be seen in this vast difference between the acidity values. So the pKa of 4.7 versus the pKa of 16 can be explained through resonance here. So to kind of tie this all together and highlight it with one last sample, let's take a look at something that doesn't necessarily have the acidic hydrogen coming from an oxygen. So it is much more difficult to take a hydrogen from a saturated hydrocarbon. And in this example, we're gonna go ahead and use propane. So propane gas has a pKa that is roughly estimated to be somewhere on the magnitude of 50 to 55. So you're talking about a very, very non-acidic compound when you are working with these. Okay, All you have to do is turn around and make that center carbon a carbonyl, and you get the structure acetone, which is a type of ketone. Now, the only hydrogens still appear on a carbon, but just the fact that there is a set of pi bonds next to the potential acidic carbon is going to drop this all the way to 19. So going from 50 to approximately 20, you're talking about a 10 to the 30th jump in acidity. That is an enormous magnitude in terms of the resonance here and what it is able to offer. Okay, so these protons right here, or because it's the same on the other side, you could argue it's these right here. Okay, they will have a pKa of 19. So all you have to do is continue to buff up the resonance, and you'll see a jump again. So if I turn around and I make essentially a diketone with these protons in the middle here, now something like this you're going to get resonance from both this carbonyl 
as well as this carbonyl. So you're increasing the number of resonance forms. This had no resonance whatsoever. This at least had one resonance form. And this has two additional resonance forms in comparison to its counterpart. So these right here are the ones that we're looking at because the ones on the side can't benefit from that extra structure. But if we were to remove either of these two protons here, you would have the extra two resonance forms from the initial deprotonation site. And that is going to, again, drop the pKa down. And this has a pKa of roughly nine. And that is because it, again, has additional resonance. It's still hydrocarbons that we're dealing with here. But the presence of the additional carbonyls and the ability to get additional resonance structures will increase acidity. So to tie this together, the concept is how does resonance affect acidity? Generally speaking, it is going to make a compound more acidic if there are acidic protons to begin with. The resonance will increase the acidity. This is also, now this is not organic chemistry here, but this is also one of the reasons that we see such a high acidity level for H2SO4. So H2SO4 is one of our extremely strong acids that we utilize. So if one of the hydrogens is to be removed here, you can see that this oxygen can very easily be in close proximity to several other resonance forms that can be found around the center sulfur. So that gives rise to some of the extreme acidity content that we see from sulfuric acid. All right, so that is it. If the video was helpful, I'm going to remind you again to leave a like because it really helps the channel and gets our content out there to people. Please head on over to chemcomplete.com. You can find a bunch of free resources there. You can get in touch with me if you need any sort of tutoring or individual help. And we have our guides for sale that really can help boost your grade and give you a greater understanding. They go into great detail and they're very affordable. It's a great way to support the channel. All that said, thank you so much for learning with us because that is the number one way that we can use support. And I will see everybody in the next lecture. See you later, guys.